Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very exciting Riviera River Cruises webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an industry relations specialist here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. This webinar will run about 30 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Marilyn Conroy. Marilyn was born in England and emigrated to America to join Cunard Line in charge of the sales and marketing of their then hotel division. After two years, she moved to the shipping division of Cunard and was subsequently promoted to VP of sales, making her the youngest and only female in the cruise industry to become a vice president. After holding positions at Crystal and Silver Sea, she was awarded the Dynamic Sales Award by Luxury Travel Advisor. In April 2011, Marilyn formed her own sales and marketing company, DMI. One of their clients was Riviera River Cruises, who she felt had a definite niche in the highly competitive river cruise market with their strong price value proposition. Marilyn felt confident that she could assist in their growth, and as a result, she accepted the position of Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And with that, take it away, Marilyn. <laughs> okay, thank you. Wow, that was a long introduction. Well, well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for being interested in Riviera River Cruising and uh, learning more about our product. I, I used to call uh, Riviera the hidden gem in the European waterways, um, but it's no longer such a hidden gem. Uh, I think the word is getting out about the value proposition that Riviera offers to your clients. Uh, but we still get some objections to how do we overcome to our clients um, that Riviera is not a household brand. I mean, let's face it, if you were to ask the average consumer in the street, name a river cruise, they would say Viking because it's almost brainwashing with the amount of advertising on public news broadcasts. Uh, that they've they've given, and one thing I, I truly think is becoming prevalent is that a, a consumer will come in and they use the Viking as a brand name and say instead of saying I want a river cruise, I want a Viking cruise. It's it's almost like saying um, I don't want a vacuum cleaner, I want a Hoover. It's become a, a come a sort of a, a brand name for river cruising throughout. So that has been one of our biggest um, stumbling blocks, if you like, is to, to get over the fact that we are not a household name. But Riviera is not a new company uh, in any means. We've actually been, our parent company's been in business for 36 years in the United Kingdom. And they entered the river cruise market about 13 years ago, but only launched in North America three years ago. Even within that short period of time, though, they've been the recipient of some pretty prestigious awards. You can see the Magellan Awards from Travel Weekly. Um, for um, 2018 and 2019, as well as the Solo Traveler Award. So we're beginning to get known out there. But what makes Riviera different? You've got a lot of companies out there that you could sell. What makes us different? We are the only river cruise company that does not go after your clients directly, and we pass clients back to you. Simply put, what happens when a direct client calls us we say, oh, do you have a travel agent? The answer is usually no, otherwise they wouldn't, presumably wouldn't be calling us in the first place. But we take the booking and then we pass it back to a travel agent that lives within the geographic area of that consumer and with whom we have a proactive working relationship. So continuing on what makes Riviera River Cruises different, um, we are the only company to offer on every departure at least six cabins with no single supplement. We also offer entire departures exclusively with no single supplement across all grades. We offer the most immersive itineraries, a total of 15 different itineraries, on 10 rivers. Actually, uh, that should be updated. It's 17 because we added two new ones. We have the youngest fleet of ships in Europe. None are older than six years. We are extremely price competitive, approximately 20% lower than our competition. And one of the questions I got last uh, webinar I did was, how can, you, how can you have such a good product and be so economically priced? 
Well, two reasons. Firstly, we had to come out with a very strong price value proposition in order to gain agents' attention in this marketplace. And secondly, because we don't do uh, consumer advertising unless it's with uh, an agent cooperatively, we don't have the expense of consumer advertising, which is very expensive. So obviously that expense has to be passed back uh, to the guest. So that's one of the ways we, we keep our prices down. We only market um, to the trade. The vessels themselves, the French balcony on the long ships are 183 square feet, which is significantly larger than Viking and many others of our competitors. And the boats were built and operated by Skiller of Switzerland, who built the boats of a luxury competitor. They are absolutely identical. And our staff were trained by Skiller, which is, as I said, the, one of the preeminent shipbuilders and operators in Europe. Continuing on this theme, it's the guest experience. We offer a five-star service. We go out of our way to do what's better for our clients, not just what is necessarily better for us. Our business model is very simple. Uh, it's, built, uh, it's built around the model that Skiller has provided for us. That is top quality service, staff, food, and onboard amenities. You'll find that our ships are elegant. They're not glitzy or stuffy. This is an example of what I mean. This is a, um, the Lord Byron is a Riviera river cruise. And uh, there's another Skiller ship from a luxury competitor docked right next door. And you really can't tell the difference. That's what the two vessels look inside. You, they are identical. The hardware is identical and the, uh, the software is pretty much identical too because of the uh, Skiller operations. So let's take a look at the fleet of vessels that we have. We currently have a total of 13. And as, as I said before, majority of them are uh, three to four years old, but none of them are older than six years. This is our new ship this year, the Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, there she is being built and uh, obviously now sailing. A uh, beautiful vessel. Uh, we take here on this ship 169 guests. Now, if you were to take a look at some of our competitors, you will see that they would take 190 guests. By having a lower guest capacity, it gives us the ability to have significantly larger cabins, as well as more public amenities for your clients, such as you know, hairdressing, salon, gymnasium, etc. We have a crew to staff ratio, a crew to guest ratio of four to one. Okay, so that's what you see when you first enter the vessel. And I always call this traditional glam because it's traditional without being stuffy. It's elegant and glamorous, but it's not glitzy. So that's the main uh, lobby area. You can see we have a nicely stocked boutique, a travel desk, concierge, and obviously reception area. And some of the features we have, because we have the extra space, is a massage area or steam room, a beauty salon for manicures, pedicures, and of course, hairdressing, a gymnasium. We have more equipment than that. I just happen to like that picture. There's, there you can see the gymnasium. And it is a gymnasium that was built to be a gymnasium. It's not a, a converted cabin. So uh, this is Panorama Lounge. Uh, it's the, or the Observation Lounge, depending on which ship you're in. It's called something different. Beautiful uh, views, 180 degrees of the ocean, of the ocean, sorry, of the river. Um, and uh, here is where we gather for light entertainment in the evening, for lectures, for pre-dinner or uh, after-dinner cocktails. So I kind of call it the heart of the ship or the gathering place. Um, very nice upper deck. You can see there, there's a jacuzzi whirlpool. Every vessel has a water element, be it the jacuzzi whirlpool or a plunge pool. And you can see a little golf putting green in the back. The uh, sun deck area is very, very nicely appointed. Uh, you can see you know, comfortable wicker chairs there with chaise lounges, both in the shade and in the sun. 
Food is, of course, a very important element on any any cruise, and we pride ourselves in having some really uh, excellent chefs at our disposal. And I want to stress here that the the company, yes, it's British, but that doesn't mean that the chefs are British, because as I said, we are staffed by Skiller, and all of the crew on board are therefore European. They have to speak English, though. Um, so you could have a German chef, a Swiss chef, a French chef, uh, whatever. It, your nationality is going to be your staff are European. So this is an example of the type of cuisine. It takes its uh, theme from the area that we are traveling in. But you can see it, it's quite a, a creative menu. You've got... Um, pumpkin soup or bouillabaisse, uh, lamb or, or um, some fish here, river perch. Uh, we always have available though, simply grilled chicken or fish. We offer complimentary room service for breakfast across all grades. Now in every cabin, we also have a coffee and tea maker. So if you want, you can get up first thing in the morning, make your own coffee or tea, then have some room service for breakfast. And if you're still hungry, go down to the restaurant and have a, a gourmet breakfast. So the dining rooms, the dining rooms are all laid out very, very similarly. The only difference, of course, is the, is the decor, the coloring. Uh, we have open seating, open dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This means you can come down anytime within a two hour period and be served. You don't have to rush in in the evening at the stroke of seven, otherwise you'll miss the meal time. Uh, it's from seven to nine, so if you want to come in at 10 to nine, you can and get the same leisurely uh, plated service. We do buffets for breakfast and for lunch. We have the ability to order off a luncheon menu if you don't want to go up and get the buffet yourself. Or um, for dinner, it's a, a plated seated affair for course dinner. Just another view of the dining room. We have also got an alternative restaurant. Uh, this is for more intimate dining. It's tables of two and four, holds an average of about 38 guests. There is no surcharge to dine here in the evening. We do require reservations and lunch is first come, first serve. It's a really nice feature. You can see there it's got like a chef's kitchen where you can actually see the chef preparing your meal. And uh, you can dine under the stars, weather permitting, at the back of the restaurant. It's open air. So we do not include alcoholic beverages. We don't do this because we feel that it should be up to the clients to choose if they want to have alcohol or not. We've got a lot of pushback. Uh, some obviously love the inclusion, some people don't. So in deference to those people who, who don't drink and who don't want to feel that they're paying for other people's drinks, we don't include the alcoholic beverages. But we do offer a, a, a wine and beer and soft drinks unlimited for lunch and dinner for only for a week, $159. So it's a, it's a pretty good value if your clients want to have unlimited wine and beer and soft drinks for lunch and dinner. But take a look here at the bar charges. They are very, very reasonable. This is not a profit center for us. You can see a, um, a six ounce glass of superior wine is 2.75 euro. That's roughly with today's rate of exchange, uh, $3. So I don't know where you can go uh, where you live for three dollars and get a nice glass of wine and it's not plonk. But I think you'll find our bar prices are extremely appealing. Okay, so the cabins with, uh, we call them river views, which is silly, they're all river views, but with windows. Now these are the cabins that we offer with no single supplement on every departure. But you can see in reality, they are a double cabin. They're not, they're not a single cabin where you're shoved at the back of the boat somewhere. It's a full double cabin that you're giving to your clients with no single supplement. And just an example of what the, the decor looks like, uh, you can see here, it, again, it's, it's modern, but it's, it's not um, minimalistic. I think they're very nicely appointed accommodations. Some are obviously mini suites, some just have the French balcony. 
that's an example of a, a balcony suite. You can see there's the French balcony and also a, what I call a, a sit-out or a walk-out balcony. And you'll find that uh, over 85% of our cabins have the French balcony. The bathrooms are beautiful, uh, very, very spacious, marble, uh, appointed throughout, Crabtree and Evelyn bath products. And you can see the shower, if you wanted to, could actually hold two people. Uh, it's got a, a rain shower and a wand shower. And obviously the bath uh, bathrooms provide terry cloth bath robes and slippers. So as I said, 85% of the accommodation has the French balcony. So again, the onboard features is a spa or sauna. The Wi-Fi is included. We have a hair and nail salon. We also have a fitness center, a putting green, a plunge pool or a hot tub. French balcony cabins are significantly more spacious. A la carte alternative restaurant with no surcharge. Coffee and tea making facilities in every cabin. And this is a comparison chart that was put together by Ralph Grizzle of the Avid Traveler. And I think he is a well-known and respected authority on river cruises. And this is his chart, not ours. But it shows you how we stack up against our friendly competitors. Um, on our French balconies are 183 square feet on the long ships. Uh, that's 48 feet larger than Viking. And you can see larger than uh, Emerald and uh, even armor. The Uniworld, of course, is a, a, a different category. We are priced at the top. We are categorized to be the top of the premium market, certainly on par with AMA, but you'll find the price structure is more in line with Viking. So this is a little 30 second clip, which is very easy for you to um, put on your, your own uh, Facebook or just show your clients. I think it gives you a nice, Quick feel for the vessel. On a Riviera River cruise, we'll take your senses on a voyage. Whether that's stepping into a different era or discovering a new and exciting city. While enjoying our spacious cabins and suites and tasting our award winning service, luxury river cruising costs less than you think at RivieraRiverCruises.com. Anyway, uh, language barrier. Well, there isn't a language barrier um, on Riviera because unlike some of our competition, English is the only language that we speak on board. Uh, we only market to the British speaking uh, to the countries such as um, United Kingdom, North America, Australia, and New Zealand. But it gives you a very, very cosmopolitan atmosphere on board because as I said, the staff are all European. We have multicultural clientele. And I think it's rather nice when you're on a European uh, trip that you want to be with Europeans, not just North Americans. I think it gives a nicer dimension to the overall trip. But so therefore you still get the international feel. And as I said before, the staff is mainly from Europe and they are all required to speak English. A misconception with river cruises, nothing to do on board. Well, our average age is now down to 55 plus. Um, 10 years ago, I think the average age in river cruises was, was probably about 65 plus. But we managed to get the average age down by providing uh, features that would appeal to the younger clientele such as we have complimentary bicycles where we encourage clients to go out on their own or as part of a tour if they want, but to go out on their own and explore the countryside. We also have the fitness center. Uh, we are now offering walking tours with varying degrees of difficulty. We have a nightly piano bar, local entertainment in select ports. We bring the local entertainment on board. We have a disc jockey, a ship crew show, and also our concierge will arrange for private tours on an at-cost basis. So in other words, if you wanted to go and get tickets to say the Spanish riding school or a certain museum, you would go to our concierge and say, listen, I want to see this, this, and this. And they will go out and get you the tickets and they will only charge you what we are charged. In other words, if the tickets cost 20 euro, 
that's what you're going to be charged. We include a shore excursion in every port. We design the shore excursions to give you a very good overview of the town or the city, but we like to leave you plenty of time to go out and explore on, on your own, hence the bicycles, or just to walk into uh, the town and perhaps sit down and observe the people, have a glass of wine, uh, you know, watch, the, watch the, the basic culture go by. So that's what we said before, the travel manager is happy to arrange for tickets to museums. It's not a profit center. So as an example, what we do in Vienna, we, we give you a tour that includes both a motor coach and walking. We always have expert uh, local guides. After, after the tours, we run shuttle buses into town if necessary. And we are adding additional uh, walking tours to some of our departures next year. Um, but we're also providing additional shore excursions on a cost basis. Solo travelers, as I said, we are very, very focused on the solo traveler because 65% of the people over over 60 are now solo, if you can believe that. That doesn't mean to say um, these, these cruises only appear, appeal to uh, divorced or widows. They appeal to people who want to go perhaps with a friend but don't want to share a cabin. So we have, as I said, an average of five cabins on every departure exclusively for the solo traveler. And we also have uh, dedicated departures, there's 15 of them in 2020, where there's no single supplement across the entire grade. Now these uh, no single supplement cruises start at 2249 and they go to all of our major itineraries. So they go to all the main rivers um, they are spread out throughout the year, but right now there's a total of 15 of them, and they, they do go very, very quickly. So where do we take you? Well, basically, we'll take you everywhere everybody else takes you because there really aren't any new rivers, though we do have a couple of new itineraries. So we take you on the Rhone and the Main and the Dutch waterways, the Danube, the Rhine, the Douro, and the Moselle. But what we do is we modify our cruises to provide your clients with a more immersive itinerary. For instance, um, the cruise to Provence, we don't go round trip Lyon, we go Lyon to Avignon. And by doing this, it enables you to sail all the way up the river and sail actually into the city of Bonn and visit the wineries in that area. Uh, if you were to take a cruise that was round trip Lyon, you wouldn't be able to do that and you'd have to take an hour and a half bus. So this way you can sail right up into uh, Baum. On the uh, very popular itinerary is Amsterdam to Basel. A lot of our competition do this. And in reality, the only thing you're going to see of Switzerland is the ride in the bus to the airport. That's because you started in Amsterdam. Once you start in Amsterdam, you have a day and a half transiting a uh, industrial canal where there's absolutely nothing to see unless you like factories. So by starting our cruises in Cologne, which in and of itself is a beautiful city, we gain a day and a half. So that enables us to overnight in Basel and include a full day tour where you actually get to see Lake Lucerne and the Alps. So that's just a couple of ways we've modified our itineraries. Um, our 14 day Black Sea cruises, they go all the way to the end of the Danube Delta. And that's the third largest world heritage site. And it's certainly something worth seeing. Two new itineraries that we have for uh, this year are Round Trip Vienna. Uh, even though they're round trip, you'll see, uh, if you can see this map, that we do not duplicate any port. And it's very nice because Vienna is an expensive city. So the first night, the uh, boat serves as a floating hotel. But you can see here, there's no overlapping. You'll go uh, leaving Vienna, and you'll go straight to Krems, um, all the way uh, up to Regensburg. But you don't duplicate um, ports on the way back. And the other itinerary that's new for us this year is Seine uh, on Paris, overnighting in Paris, and going down to the Normandy beaches, visiting the American and Canadian beaches. And again, in Paris, the uh, ship serves as a floating hotel. 
Our sales policy is very user friendly. We hold bookings for five working days. It's seven if you include the weekend. We ask for a deposit of $400 per person. It is non-refundable for groups and FITs. Final payment is only 13 weeks out. And after 90 days, penalties for cancellations kick in starting at 15%. So Riviera loves groups. <laughs> we love groups. We give tour conductors on the basis of one for 10. The 11th passenger or cabin is complimentary. We have a group desk which will assist you with creating flyers for promotions. We do something that nobody else does. When we uh, give you a group allocation, we actually take the space out of the inventory and we hold it with no deposit for eight weeks because I can't imagine that there's anything more frustrating than you get somebody to agree to do a group with you and you take your group block out with whomever and two weeks, three weeks, four weeks later, they say, oh, I'm sorry, that space is now sold out. So we don't do that. We actually take it out of inventory for you. We hold it with no deposit for eight weeks. Where do you find new business? Um, well, these are basically tried and true avenues that, that um, are, are very good sources of group business. Fundraising for uh, churches, synagogues. Uh, clients who've sailed on ocean liners. This is this is probably one of the the highest areas we get our uh, guests from, new guests from, because there's so much going with the river cruises versus the ocean cruises. Ocean cruises that they've, they've been around a lot longer, and you've got clients who've been there, done that, and want to go somewhere new and really explore the interior of the country. So yes, you, if you've got a frequent cruiser on an ocean, they could very very well be an excellent target for a river cruise. Solo, uh, ladies groups, it doesn't have to be ladies groups, it could be Kiwanis clubs. Uh, it's basically solo travelers who have uh, a, some kind of a club. M create a meetup group or civic organizations, country clubs, yacht clubs, wineries, wine clubs, garden clubs, uh, obviously empty nesters, friends and families, and senior communities. This is one of the ways that I really like to, to put together new group business, and that's cross-marketing with another business, such as um, a wine bar. This wouldn't work if you, if you tried it in a, um, a huge liquor store, but if you have a, a local wine bar, you would go to that wine bar and say, listen, why don't we do a presentation on Riviera? I will invite my clients. You invite your clients. They get cross-pollination, if you like, and we'll get Riviera to do a presentation on a specific group departure. And it's very good for both parties because you are um, exposing their clients to uh, you and vice versa. So both parties should be able to build their business. Anyway, look in your own backyard. Um, what organizations and clubs do you belong to? What about friends? Could you say, come along with me, I'm doing this cruise and let's all get together? Um, anyway, that's just a couple of ideas. Now, we have obviously a website. We have a travel agency portal. You can use the travel agency portal for online bookings 24-7. They'll give you trip planners. You can see exactly what you're buying and what you're getting. The only thing you don't get is a cabin number, but you will be called back uh, the, the next business day and given your client's uh, cabin number. I would encourage every counselor to take our online agent academy. That's the um, sign-in information. To, it's just your uh, IATA number and Riviera USA. That's the password, Riviera USA. And if you take the, the course, it's not that difficult. It's about 45 minutes. Um, you will get three clear credits. Now, only agents who have completed the Riviera Online Training Academy will be eligible to participate in SAM trips. Right now, we have our wave season promotion, which is good up until the end of March. We're set offering savings of up to $1,500 per cabin on all 15-day cruises. And as you can see, it goes down to as low as 200 on the very economical cabins. New for Riviera, we can now provide you with air and hotel services. 
The air is commissionable at 10, the hotel is at 12. That's a separate number for them. Uh, but if you want, when you just finish making your booking, ask to be uh, transferred to Riviera Air and they can handle that for you. So I'm asking you to support the travel agency. Uh, we support the travel agency distribution system 100% by not taking direct bookings. And I would hope that in turn you would support us. Uh, your commission structure is 15% with the opportunity to earn more. This is our sales team. It's lean and mean, as we say. Uh, your sales directors, Bruce in the Northeast, David in the uh, Southeast, Adam in charge of the group desk. That's me and Barbara Sargent for the West Coast. Here's the uh, email addresses for everybody. It's very simple. It's our name, Marilyn.Conroy, at RivieraRiverCruises.com. We have a dedicated re reservations team headed up by Chris Barker. You can see uh, these people are very knowledgeable about Riviera. They've all been on Riviera, obviously, and are there to help you at any time. Reservation hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Well, thank you, and uh, I'm open for questions. Perfect, thank you. We do have some questions coming in. Our first one is from Sue, who is wondering if passengers need to dress up for dinner and if you could speak to dress codes in general, that would be great. Yeah, sure. No, you don't have to dress up. Um, river cruises are always more casual. Uh, you, 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 your gentleman may want to take a jacket for the captain's night, but it's not necessary. So I'm gonna say country cub casual, polo shirts or just a shirt for dinner and nice slacks and ladies usually wear, I don't know, pantsuits or dresses, but it's not dressy, it's country club casual. Okay, perfect. And Dana has a question that I'm sure is on everybody's mind. How is coronavirus impacting these destinations? <laughs> not at all yet, um, because we don't go, unfortunately it has spread now to Italy as we know, so it hasn't affected it. Um, we wouldn't take the vessel where it wasn't safe. Okay, perfect. Sue is yeah, wondering... I have to jump in on this one. You know, more people have died of the flu than they have of the coronavirus. That is true. Anyway, so, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I would just urge everyone to keep in touch with your local BDMs um, for all of our cruise line policies. But Sue is wondering if the fares that you listed are in US dollars. Yes, we, uh, we sell in US dollars. The currency on board is uh, euros, but we sell in, in uh, North America in US dollars. Okay, perfect. And it looks like this might be our last question from Joyce, who is wondering if you can speak about handicap access on both the ships and excursions. Yes, uh, you know, in Europe, they don't have the strict regulations that we have. You know, you have to have handicap accessible cabins, you've got to have ramps. Uh, in Europe, as you know, on when you go on the tours, uh, there's cobblestones, so it's, you know, harder to walk. Um, but you know, if you have really limited mobility, I wouldn't recommend it. You have to remember that even though we have an elevator that goes through all the passenger decks, quite often in ports, the boats become rafted that means where one boat is tied up alongside of another boat. And in order to disembark, you've got to go up to the sun deck, walk across the sun deck of the boat you're on and the next one, and then go down some steps in order to get off. So you have to have decent mobility. Now, if you do have somebody in a wheelchair that wants to go, that's fine, but you have to have somebody with them that's prepared to push it because the staff can't do that. So I would say limited mobility is, is okay, but if it's, if it's pretty significant, no. Just think how well would they handle walking on cobblestones and things like that. That makes sense. And we do have just some last minute questions coming in. Can you go back please to the cabin category slide? Uh, yes, I've got, to, I've got to whiz back on that because that's all the way. <laughs> Are you talking about the comparison? Or that all my great. deck plan? <laughs> um, let's go to the deck plan and then see if Well, I the think comparison. this one will come first, sorry, because <laughs> it's easier for me just to go backwards. Um, 
And while you're looking for oh, that, that's the com- our, that's the compa- whoa. Yeah, that's the comparison. Whoa, that, that's the comparison shot. Sorry. Perfect. Thank you. And then uh, we have two more questions. Very quickly, can you repeat the password for the Travel Agent Academy? Yes, it's your IATA number and then Riviera USA. Perfect. And Sue is wondering if credit card payments are accepted and which ones. Yes, uh, all the major credit cards. Perfect. One more clarification for the password. Is it all in lowercase? Capital R in uppercase, and the rest is lowercase. Okay. There's one upper and all lower. Makes sense. Okay, and it looks like those are all of our questions. Thank you, Marilyn, so much for all of the wonderful information, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.